everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free book review of Echo After Echo by Amy Rose Capetta. I received an arc of this book from Candlewick Press and it was actually released last month in October. And I got it on the same day that it was published, so I'm just now getting my review up. Echo After Echo is a YA contemporary mystery with LGBTQ plus representation. This story follows Zara Evans. I don't know actually if it's pronounced Zara or Zara, I'm just gonna say Zara because that's how I heard it in my head. She's a late teenager who's an aspiring actress. She goes to New York City to audition for a part in Echo and Ariston, which is her favorite play, and she's auditioning for Echo. She doesn't really have any experience other than in her high school, and she doesn't expect for this to go anywhere but it does. So after being selected for the role of Echo, she goes to New York City, but the day that she arrives in New York City in the theater, there is a murder at the theater. Or she thinks it's a murder, because nobody else seems to think so, so far. And that's kind of where the story picks up. Zara teams up with Ellie? Ellie? Eli? I always heard it as Ellie in my head. <laughs> but they team up to try to uncover what is happening around this murder as some more things start happening in the theater that are kind of fishy. I'll go ahead and mention some of my favorite things about the book. So I loved the characters in this story, and particularly the diverse representation. I'm not a member of any of the populations that were represented in this book, so I can't speak to how well the representation was done, but just seeing that diverse cast of characters I really appreciate it. On the page we have bisexual and homosexual characters, so it's not just hinted at or something, it's like explicitly stated these characters' sexuality, which is great, because I feel like sometimes authors just want to hint around at things without actually saying. Zara is also Jewish and Ellie is Puerto Rican, and there's also a character with ADHD. A lot of the characters are also really lovable, Zara and Ellie, I adored both of them. Adrian Ward is another character who is really great. And then the characters who are not likable are really not likable. I won't name any names, but if you read this, you'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> another thing that I loved was the romance in this. And that's saying something because I'm not a person who likes romance. But the love story in this was adorable. It was a little insta-lovey for my taste, but it was still like so cute that I just couldn't help but like it. It was probably my favorite aspect of the story, honestly. I've mentioned in previous videos that I really love when characters have passions and they come out in the story, and Zara has such a passion for her acting that it's just... the entire theater thing I thought was really cool and really well done. Apparently Amy Rose Capetta is a theater person and studied theater in college, I think. And then Ellie, who is a lighting designer, that was something that I had a harder time understanding, but the way that the character was thinking about it made it seem so clear how someone could love lighting design. And then there were a few things that I wasn't a huge fan of in this story. I'm not a big mystery reader myself, so though I was interested in what was going on, that wasn't the part of the plot that was really pulling me. The romance was actually what I was in this for. And though I can appreciate how everything kind of came together, I wasn't really a big fan of the ending. I was reading an advanced reading copy, so there may have been some changes made in the book that was actually published, but I found the ending to be very abrupt. I was actually kind of flipping through at the end going, is there more? Like, is this it? Because it doesn't feel like an end to me, but it was. I don't know if that's how it was in the actual version that was published, but that is how reading the arc was for me. But overall, I did really enjoy this story, particularly the diverse cast of characters and the adorable romance, and I gave it 3.5 stars. Throughout most of the book, I was reading it thinking that it would probably be 4 stars or above, but then once I got to that end, I wasn't totally satisfied, and it knocked it down to about a 3.5. I would be interested, though, to see the published version and if there are any key differences. But that's going to be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you've read Echo After Echo, or if you're interested in picking it up, and what you thought about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time, bye.